Hello everyone, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. My name is Winged Supernova, and in the last episode... We, uh, we worked through a few things, and we got the ability to exam... Exam... Examine things. Oh my goodness. Once again, recording this at 11pm at the moment. <laughs> and this episode will continue until the next day. So, with that being said... Uh, the burning question at the moment is, who took that photograph? And the truth is, we do have the answer, thanks to my lovely theory crafting that I did in the last episode. We know exactly who did this. Also, can we just talk about the fact that it looks like Susato is wearing a bow on the back of her head? I mean, I don't think that that's probably... That's probably good for uh, the disguise, but hey, yeah, you never know. This isn't about whether I can or can't come up with the answer now. I simply have to. The identity of the person who took this dramatic photographic print is, I assure you, something the defense can and will reveal. What? No, you can't possibly. But as you so boldly claim that you can, please do enlighten us. Unfortunately, I'm unable to present a name. How utterly underwhelming. Do you really believe that you could... Did you really believe you could... However, I am, I am able to present evidence. The defense has a piece of evidence that reveals important details about the photographer's identity. What? Very well then, counsel. Present your proof to the court. Which piece of evidence do you claim reveals something about the identity of this mystery photographer? It's this one. Yeah. It's that one right there. What is that? The newspaper again? Raucous England returnees tell all. It's not the headline that's relevant here, Your Excellency. It's the photograph. If you look at it closely, you'll notice that there are some white lines on the right-hand side. Ah, yes indeed. They had, they had already caught my eye as it happens. What of it? A shadow of some kind, presumably, from the branches of a tree or the like. That was indoors. There are no trees growing inside my laboratory at the university, I can assure you. Now, if you look closely at this photograph... Good gracious! Yes, exactly the same pattern of lines is present on this photograph, too. Well, well, that, that tells us nothing. Ha! Uh, huh, yes, it's a shadow of some kind, definitely, from the branches of a tree. There wouldn't be any trees growing inside a hut at the beach council. Ugh! What's quite remarkable about it is that the two patterns are absolutely identical. How could such an extraordinary similarity have transpired? The curious matching pattern that appears on both photographic prints is a result of... Uh, camera defects. Obviously, it must be due to a problem with the camera used to take the photographs. With... with the photographic device? Yes, we can confidently say that the camera's lens must be scratched, and that the scratched lens causes unwanted lines to appear on every print taken with the device. In short, the two photographs under consideration here were taken with the same camera. Hmm. Uh, but... There must be hundreds of such camera devices here in the capital. It would be utterly impossible to identify the owner of this particular one. I think you're forgetting, Prosecutor Ouchie that one of the photographs featured in a newspaper article. A newspaper? Ah! That's right. The author of that article is the mystery witness to this crime. What? Wah! mini me -oh. oh, it was you. That's what I expected. I, 
I see why you were called a raucous English returnee. England returnee. What are you yelling about? You've already testified. It's Minamimo, I tell you. Minamimo. Mi, me, me, mo. And that is... Um, so Seki-san, what was that? Did you say mini Mimo? Ever since I returned to Japan, a reporter from the Shoyu News has been hounding me, following my every move. A reporter by the name of Raiten Mini Mimo. Yes, hounding me from dawn till dusk. Ah, now that he mentions it. They secretly spy snapshots, scribble stories, and scupper my privacy. He also has... I can't tell whether he has like an eye patch or something else. Oh, do you see that? Do you see like the ink splotch on his hand too? That's interesting. And it looks like he's writing with a pencil. So he couldn't have gotten that ink on his hand from writing with that pencil. Huh. So I wonder where that ink came from, you know? Maybe it came from, you know, removing the ink from the fountain pen and replacing it with the poison. Could that same reporter be... A camera to the left of him! A notebook to the right! There I am, stuck in the middle with... Right and Mini Mimo! So you're saying that this picture was taken by... By Mini Memo, yes! My lord, your excellency, Esquire! Ah, he said the Esquire part. Officer, find this newspaper reporter at once and bring him to my courtroom. We will adjourn for a short recess in the meantime. Oh, yes, your excellency. As, as you say, your excellency. And one more thing. I want this knife, the murder weapon, examined for traces of poison. Wait, what? Didn't she pull the fountain pen from his... I'm so confused. Hold on. Oh. So she was clutching the fountain pen. And the knife. That's so weird. She was clutching the fountain pen, but she was stabbed with a knife. Weird. Weird. You will solicit the assistance of the Imperial University's medical department for the task. Understood? Meh. Mini Memo! He's already lost it. We're not even done with the case yet, and he's already lost it. To be continued. Well, would be a weird supernova great ace attorney playthrough without, you know, stopping the last episode shortly before we get to a uh, a save point, right? Oh boy. Well, since it's case one, I'm pretty sure it's rather straightforward, and this is the guy who did it. But why is the question, and that. We will have to, uh, we will have to make our way through the rest of the trial and, you know, actually prove that he did it in order to get that answer. Supreme Court of Judicature, Defendant's Antechamber 3. Ooh, she looks glum. I'm so sorry, Susato. I should have told you about the toxin. Ray. You have a strong sense of responsibility, I know. That's why you decided to shoulder the burden alone. No, that's not it at all. I... I was just... I was scared of my failure coming to light, that's all. So I hoped to retrieve the substance from the Englishwoman before anyone found out. Before the trial started, do you remember what you said, Susato? That you had no doubt in your mind about my innocence. That you'd stand by me to the last. I remember. And yet I... 
I didn't deserve your trust in me. I hid important details from you, Susato. I completely betrayed your faith in me. Hit me, Susato. I deserve it. No, in fact, throw me to the floor. Yeah, do it. Susato, take down. No, that's too good for me as well. Drag me through the city street. I, I... Is there something you're not telling me, Ray? Huh? You fucking masochist over here? Huh? Stop venting your frustrations on me because I look like a man. And get some help. All right? Saying this as your friend. As your companion. As your attorney. Stop it. Get some help. I'm no better, you know. Oh! Even though in my heart I knew you'd pulled the knife blade from Miss Brett's back, there was just a brief moment when, in my mind, I doubted you. Susato! I'm sorry. After I stood here and promised you that I'd stand by you and always be on your side, I betrayed your faith in me too. And as such, I failed you as a lawyer. Oh, no, no! I think this situation has taught both of you a valuable lesson. Placing your unbridled faith in another is no easy task. Yes, Father. That, in fact, that fact has certainly struck home. Which is why I can see more clearly now. So, Ray... Yes? Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Oh, Susato. You know you'll always be a gallant, dashing lawyer in my eyes now. Oh, Ray. Well, sentimental moment out of the way. I was so scared, you know, when it happened. I didn't know what was going on. The Englishwoman was sitting at the back of the hut, listening to what I was saying. I know it was you who stole the poison. Well, now, whatever do you mean? And then a moment later, she suddenly got to her feet. Before collapsing on the floor in front of me, with a knife in her back. She was clutching the pen at that time. It all happened right before my eyes. And you were the only people in the hut at the time? That's right, just Miss Brett and myself. There was no one else. So I just don't understand how she could have possibly been stabbed like that. Hmm, a great mystery indeed. I still can't believe it happened. That's why I just couldn't bring myself to speak up. It will be alright. However it happened, and whatever really went on that by the sea that day, I promise you that I'm going to prove everything you said... Everything you've said you saw is true. Spoken like a true Mikotoba. Now, I think we should discuss what's coming up in the trial, don't you? We don't have much time. We must make sure we have our facts in order. Yes, I expect the poison is going to come under close scrutiny in the upcoming proceedings. The police should hopefully have identified it on the blade by now. The trouble is, it's a completely new laboratory synthesized blend of alkaloids. The police won't have any way of testing for it. Oh, I see. Yes, without this chemical regent, it's impossible to detect the toxin. Chemical regent? I sent a colleague of mine off with some earlier to deliver to police headquarters. I think perhaps you should have... You should have some as well, though, just in case. Oh, maybe we should. Hmm. What's the matter, Susato? You're suddenly very quiet. It's this newspaper article. Exclusive, deadly poison stolen from Yume Medical Research Laboratory. I'm wondering how the information got out, given that it was a government secret. It was all the Englishwoman's doing! What? It was when that professor and Soseki-san were being interviewed at the laboratory. That so-called English lady swanned in, uh, and without any compunction said to Professor Mikotoba, Oh, Professor, surely your guest would love to hear about your work on that substance there. 
It put me in a very awkward position, to be frank. But Soseki-san's curiosity had been piqued, so I had little choice but to give him a cursory introduction. So then, Soseki-san knew about the poison. Yes, and it's highly likely that the reporter who was writing up the story about us would have caught a glimpse of the toxin too. This many memo san By the way, didn't that reporter join you all when you went on the beach? Oh, no, I don't remember the reporter being there. Indeed, he shouldn't have been. I very much doubt anyone would have wanted him there. Oh? A known criminal had been given permission by the authorities to bathe by the seaside. Suseki-san pointed out that inviting in a reporter might be problematic, so the man was sent back to his office. Yet he obviously didn't go back. He secretly followed the party to the beach and took this very candid photograph. And then presumably he posted it anonymously to the police. Ah! Yes, that must be what happened. Council! We've just heard that the new witness is now ready to testify. The trial's about to resume. Please proceed into the courtroom at once. It's time to steal ourselves once again, then. Defense attorney, Ryutaro Naruhoto. Yes! That was, that was almost like a bark. Ray has put her faith in me now and told me everything, so I can't let her down. I have to prove what, what she's telling the court is true. I have to prove what really happened that day. Yeah, this is probably the only break we're going to get this trial. The final battle begins. Courtroom one. I hereby call this court to order as we reconvene to continue the trial of Ray Mimbami. Prosecutor Auchi, have you summoned the new witness? Before I address that question, Your Excellency, I have some very important news to share. Oh god, not that fucking animation. Oh? What news? And why does he look so happy about it? Probably the fact that they couldn't find the poison on the knife. During the recess, with the collaboration of Professor Mikotoba's laboratory at Yume University, the police re-examined the knife that was used to end Miss Giselle Brett's life. Excellent. I admire your rapid handling of the matter. Oh, too kind, Your Excellency. Too kind. I was merely carrying out your instructions, of course. I had the region delivered to police headquarters by rickshaw, so it would be there in good time. But judging by the man's, but judging by the man's swagger, I fear we might need to brace ourselves for the inevitable. And, Council, what were the results? This dagger, which was so cruelly used to end the life of the victim, has no trace of poison anywhere along its blade. Wh what Are you sure about that? I would stake the reputation of the police on it. Armed with the Regent, the test is extremely simple. They couldn't have made a mistake. Huh. It says no poison was found on the blade, but what about the handle? In short, the accused's feeble excuse earlier has been utterly destroyed. Ah! Now, the prosecution is ready to call the new witness. Ah, the newspaper reporter who managed to capture a photograph of the crucial moment. Good. Very well, officer. Breed of the witness. Oh, I can actually examine this? So what does this say? The label appears to be written in a foreign language that I don't know. It's German, so your knowledge of English is going to be of little help here, I'm afraid. Couldn't you have just written medicine on it in Japanese? Then we'd all be able to read it. German is the international language of medicine, my dear. But yes, I can certainly see the merit in labeling the bottle in Japanese. Though I'm not sure medicine would be entirely appropriate. That's very true. And then that's pretty much it for examining this. At least for now. 
Can we examine anything else? Ah, yes. This must be the victim's blood. Oh, dear. Blood is never a pretty sight, is it? I'm having to fight the urge to run it under a hot tap and get it clean. You've always been fastidious about cleanliness, haven't you? I think this is something else, Father. Uh, it doesn't seem like we're going to get anything. Unfortunately. I was hoping that maybe we would be able to... Uh, use the regent on the handle of the knife, but maybe that'll be later. Very well, officer. Bring in the witness. No trace of poison on the knife, but if that's really the case, how could the toxin have entered the victim's body? Well, there was a wine glass on the floor next to her. Maybe she drank it. Witness, please state your name and occupation for the court. A solo witness this time, huh? Right in Minmimo of the Show You News. I'm what people like to call a journal. What's a journo, Father? Do you know? It's simply a contraction of journalist. I'm there where the news breaks, putting pen to paper to catch those scoops so they're in the print the next morning. They don't call me the hero of the Herald for nothing. The nice guy of news. That's gonna be his voice. Oh, so, um, it was you who took this photograph, was it? Well, well, what have we here? I'm... I'm sorry? Ooh, brace yourselves, people! Menmimo senses a scoop in the offing! Female student up to foul play defended by curiously handsome young lawyer in Supreme Court. The readers will lap this up. We'll set it above the fold at, sev at 72 point in a five-leg format for the morning edition. Huh? Right then. Let's start with your name. Oh, um, it's Ryutaro Naruhoto. Next, what made you want to become a lawyer? Um, well, um, I wanted to reform our country's legal system, I suppose. Ryutaro has suddenly become very ambitious, I see. <laughs> I just borrowed Kazuma-sama's dream for a while. By the way, my name is Taketsuchi Auchi. That's Taketsuchi Auchi. The so-called dark horse of the Supreme Court, my objections strike fear into every defense lawyer's heart. Yawn. No, the readers won't buy that. What? Witness. Um, yes. What this court demands to know is whether or not you were responsible for the taking of this picture. It was delivered anonymously to the Imperial Police Bureau only yesterday. Yeah, I wouldn't be a journo if I didn't click quick when, I, when presented with a scoop like that now, would I? Sometimes stories call out to me, sometimes I have to chase them down, but either way you gotta be fast. Fast legs to run with and a fast hand to write with. Oh shit. It's still good if you don't if you don't note it down. I always say. So your name is what again? Ah, uh, R M, huh? So it's your pen. That's interesting. Yeah, I see that little, I see that little uh, symbol on your, on your badge. Well, your little, I don't, I don't know what they call them, armband. I guess that's good enough. That's what I call my mini-memoism. I fucking hate it. I hate it already. Mini-memoism? Ah, uh, yes, I remember your face. We met that day when you were interviewing myself and Soseki-san. Yes, right, that was me. Mini-memo again. But you were supposed to be going back to the Show You News offices after our meeting. But the scoop is, I didn't. Because that Englishwoman's words had piqued my journalistic interest. Miss Brett's words? A criminal left to do as she pleases, just because she happens to be a British citizen. It's horse done. 
This country's judiciary is rotten to the core. The Supreme Court's rulings aren't worth the paper they're written on. The police are just imperial pawns. Stay your tongue, young man. These are There are complex political issues at play. <laughs> well, anyway, I quickly jotted down those words she said in my mini memo memo pad. I fucking hate everything. <laughs> Christ. Are you ready? I'll read it out. It's all right. It's all here. Right? Here goes. I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. A serious criminal going on some junket. The people need to know about this. That's why I decided to sneak after them. To get the woman's story so I could hammer her in the press. Do you mean to say that you did indeed witness it firsthand? The grim scene portrayed in this photograph? Oh yes! I saw it with my very own journo eyes. From start to finish, through the viewfinder of my trusty camera. Thank you, Mini Memo san. You will now give a formal testimony before the court. You will state exactly what it is you witnessed of the events surrounding Miss Brett's death. The camera never lies. The beach hut was made of shoddy old reed screens, so there were plenty of gaps I could see inside the inside through. The English woman was sitting on a stool when the stu student girl came in and started arguing with her. Seconds later, the girl pulled out a knife, throwing the English woman to the floor as she stabbed her in the back. My smoldering journo spirit burst into flames. Quick as a flash, I whipped out my camera ready to click. I pulled apart the, th the rough weave of one of the screens and poked the lens through for the perfect shot. Read screens, you say? Right! You can see them clearly enough in that great shot I snapped. The hut walls were just screens made of coarsely woven reeds. Yes, it allows the breeze to pass through and bring some relief from the summer heat. And it was a breeze for me to poke my camera through and see the whole thing hotting up. Ignoring for the time being the appalling invasion of privacy involved. Did you witness everything that happened from the moment the defendant entered the hut? Oh yes, I saw it. I saw the whole thing from start to finish. And you say that you took the photograph through a gap in one of the screens? Luckily for me, they were pretty shoddily woven. I pulled the reeds apart and thrust the lens of my camera through the gap. Would I get away with it? Or would I be seen? It was the gamble of a lifetime. A tenacity of, pu of purpose that's considered admirable in a journalist, I suppose. Run a risk one day, run a scoop the next. That's mini memoism in a nutshell. At last, it would appear we have a genuine witness to this wicked crime. The evidence and testimony are extremely compelling. I believe we may be close to a verdict. No! Wonderful news, Your Excellency, wonderful! Nevertheless, it cannot be denied that this testimony begs one very large question. What question? Exclusive news, a startling photograph, all the makings of an exceptional story for the reporter. Why then, was the story never published? Oh, that's right. It seems clear to me that there are circumstances at play here that are yet to be understood. More pathetic excuses. Very well then, counsel. Proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, your excellency. That's the wrong voice. Yes, your excellency. There's more to this reporter than meets the eye. He's keeping something about this case very close to his chest. And I'm not talking about his suspenders. Or the fact that he aff can afford a tie clip in 1910 or whatever the fuck it is. All right, so I'm just gonna press everything, I think. What made you want to see what was happening inside the beach hut in the first place? Call it Jarno Instinct. Can you think of a better reason? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps because as well as being a proven criminal, the person inside was a young woman. 
Ah, I see where you're going with this. Brace yourselves, people. He's painting the journo as a voyeur. It's hardly slander, sir. You had a camera and you were taking pictures without the woman's knowledge. Nope, you've got it all wrong, little student boy. Sorry? To my mind, all that was inside that hut was a scoop. Nothing more, nothing less. Scoops know no gender. Man or woman, it's all news. That's not even many memoism. It's basic journalism. I don't think that's journalism. If only the courtroom was as indiscriminate. Right, so if that's all buttoned up, can we move on? Tell the court then, witness, what sight befell your eyes when you looked inside the hut? A sight that vindicated my journal instinct, that's what. When I pulled back the reeds, I could see it all as clear as day. Oops, I meant to go back. Hold it. Press. So you actually saw Mimbami-san enter entering the hut? Yep, and she was raging. Raging like my journo spirit. And the argument you mentioned, what was that about exactly? You stole it. I didn't steal it. That kind of thing. Talking about the poison, I suppose. The student girl walked right up to the Englishwoman and, really, and really started laying into her. I mean, if she'd laid into her any more, there would have been eggs. Really? The man should have been an author. His descriptive talents are wasted on journalism. But the student's rantings fell on deaf ears, like a Japanese person listening to English for the first time. He really ought to work on his similes first, though, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, the point is, that woman in the dock was mightily angry. And her temper finally got the better of her, it seems. Dear me. Which was the climactic moment that I caught on film. Seconds later, the girl pulled out a knife, throwing the Englishwoman to the floor. She stabbed her in the back. I forgot the fucking press. God damn it. I gotta sit through that thing, and then I can press. Do you swear before this court that you actually saw the precise moment when the stabbing took place? Ha! The precise moment? I didn't just see that. I saw the whole hellish scene play out from start to finish. I have here a simple plan of the beach hut. Oh, here's evidence. Perhaps you could use it to explain to the court exactly what you witnessed. Right you are. It's all here in my mini memo memo pad. When I first peered into the hut, I'm sure that the English woman was on this stool at the back of the hut here. Yes, the accused's own testimony confirmed that. She just sat at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly. Is what I have noted down. It's my turn to testify now. Try not to interrupt. Ugh. Then the next moment, as I was watching, the evil student girl entered the hut. After a while, the pair of them ended up in the middle of the hut, arguing furiously. The Englishwoman went for the student, but the girl dodged out of the way. And in a flash, plunged the knife into her adversary's back as the two passed each other. Ho! Oh, what you describe as a grim crime indeed. Grim crime indeed. Never sugarcoat the truth. That's what mini memoism says. By the way, Mini Memo son, whilst you were watching that terrible scene unfold before your eyes through the gap in the screen, did it not occur to you to try to prevent the tragedy rather than capture it on film? Journos have to be observers. We can't get involved. That's our right. That's our rise on the tray. So you didn't converse with Miss Brett at all? Obviously not. An observer always remains on the outside looking in. And that's something to be proud of, is it? Your Excellency, if I may. Yes, Professor? I think the witness's last expertly phrased statement 
should perhaps be added to his formal testimony. Father, what are you... I will grant the defense's request. Many Memo-san, you will supplement your formal testimony with the aforementioned statement. Well, nihilism is the foundation of many memoism, but I'll gladly prove that my words aren't meaningless. Okay, you know what? No questions. Let's just keep going. Okay, never once set foot in the hut, nor spoke with the English woman. Hmm. I think I'll press this first. Really, you didn't set foot inside the hut at all? Are you quite sure about that? I think you may have the wrong impression of me. We're taking, we're talking about a murder scene here. My nerves were stretched to the breaking point already. Oh, I see, you were scared. Maybe I did have the wrong impression of you, yes. It was all I could do to stifle a scream and hold my hands steady enough to snap the shot. You really should have summoned help before thinking of your camera. Minimumism and humanism don't always agree. And most of the time in those instances, minimumism comes out on top. <sighs> As a sculptor of stories, sometimes I have to be cruel for my art. Yes, that's spot on. Surely he's making all this up. Sure hope not. He claims to have spied the whole affair from start to finish. If true, his testimony is devastating. But it does seem as though he's holding something back, doesn't it? If that's how you feel, I suggest that you trust your instincts and press him on everything he's said. As you've no doubt seen done many times before in your role as judicial assistant. Yes, I have. I've seen witnesses like this pressed often. I know exactly what to do. So, let's see... So this was added to the end. Can I check this one? Right? Is there anything in the shot that can prove that he entered the room? Well, we see a dark. I, I now that I see the 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 wine glass there, there's a dark splotch on the ground there. So it's potential. It's possible that she could have ingested the poison and been stabbed, like a twofer. But I don't think I can prove with this that sh that he entered the crime scene, right? seems weird I'm gonna I'm just gonna go back here and keep pressing keep pressing the court is fully aware of your desire to capture the incident on film I'm sure but why then did you choose to post the photograph anonymously to the police I'm afraid I don't understand a word that's coming out of your mouth I'm asking why, as a journalist, you decided not to make a story out of the incident. Think of me as a sculptor, a sculptor who makes art out of the sordid private details of other people's lives. But I never discuss my own personal life on principle. I mean, that's basic mini-memoism. It's not something to boast about. No doubt your burning desire to see the truth exposed of injustice done was what motivated you. Oh, it was what motivated you? I thought he was talking to us. That's it. That's brilliant. My burning desire to see something on something or other exposed. There has to be a good reason why he didn't think to write an article about what he saw, though. By your own admission, you were outside the hut. How, then, did you manage to take the photograph? Ah, yes, that. I'm glad you asked. Hold it. 
Hold it. But the two women inside didn't notice? Ha! Obviously not. If they had, where would I be right now? In jail, that's where. Which you'd think would make you reflect on what you were doing. Now, what you know's job is to collect little snippets of life as unobtrusively as possible. Leave nothing but footprints, take nothing but photos. Yes, that's spot on. Did he just make that up? The point is, the witness risked life and limb to obtain this photograph. And this photograph reveals the whole truth. There is nothing more to be said. Hmm. So that's it. That's all we get. I accidentally clicked on through. So we pressed him on everything. It's got to be something with the last statement, right? So, I never once set foot in the hut, nor spoke with the English woman. Huh. Hold it. I- no, I didn't mean to do that. Oops. Well, I gotta skip through this, unfortunately. So, while we do this, he... Gipped through. He. I'm trying to think of something that we can get him with there, and I can't come up with anything. Never once set foot in the hot hut, nor spoke with the English woman. Is there anything that we can present? for this because I can't really do anything with that at the moment That's true. Now that I think about it, how would he have written this article? How would he have written the article about the poison, right? I wish it would have been... And that was in today's paper? So, I think it might be this. Specifically because... The only two people... Well, yeah, I, th I think that the only two people that would have known about the missing poison would have been Ray and Giselle Brett if she stole the poison, right? Especially all about the effects and everything. It's kind of weird to me. So I think this is it. I'm going to save, of course. Yes, trial part two. So I think it's this, uh, so present this. Objection. No, it's not it. Interesting. The witness's statement is definitively contradicted by this piece of evidence. Is that so, counsel? Then perhaps you would care to explain to the court precisely how? How? Well, definitely, definitively, the contradiction lies, the contradiction lies in your apparent eagerness to present an empty argument, I feel. Perhaps I need to reconsider. If I miss one more, then I'll reload. I have to, it has to be this. I'm not sure whether it's this or not.
I think it might be this, because you don't see, like, a big gaping hole where he took the, uh, photo from, right? But in that case, wouldn't it be... Wouldn't it be this? Hmm. Maybe it's this. Oh, okay. I didn't know we were going, we were just, you know, booking it on this so early. I thought that this would be a later thing, but I guess not. Mini memo son, until now I've had a firm belief that newspapers are in the business of uncovering and publishing the truth. You're spot on there. The press doesn't lie, which is why I'm proud to wear the sh emblem of the show you news on my arm. In a way, that's more mini memoism. Sadly though, it seems the journalists who write for those papers don't always share the same passion for the truth. What? What are you suggesting with those recriminatory words, Council? Mini Memo san, do you recognize this fountain pen? Ah! This pen was found at the scene of Miss Brett's death. In fact, the murdered victim was gripping it in her hand as she died. What are you? If you look at the barrel of the pen, you'll notice that its owner's initials are engraved there. R. M. Yes, thank you for bringing that up, Council. The initials of the accused, Ray Mimbami. Is it a coincidence, I wonder, that your initials are also R. M.? No! Write in mini memo, R. M. That's. that's horse done! Can't you see? One of the central tenets of mini memoism is being a pencil user. And yet, as the court will clearly be able to see, your right hand, on your right hand, there is a very obvious blue ink stain. It would appear that you must have rather carelessly left it somewhere recently. Your favorite fountain pen, that is. Horsey horse done! Mini memo son, is it not the case that before she died, you met with Giselle Brett in that beach hut? Why should we have to listen to this absurd nonsense? It's nothing but another excuse. Exactly. Show you news will stand behind me all the way. I deny everything. There must be as many people with the initials RM as there are stars in the night sky. The defense has another has neither the time nor the inclination to count every star in the sky. Hmm. And there's no need anyway, because this pin has more to tell. Yes, there is another clue. A clue that undeniably proves who its owner really is. In that case, counsel, the defense will now show the court where this alleged clue lies. Of course, your excellency. The clue on this fountain pen that clearly reveals its owner's identity is... The emblem of Show You News. Oh, I don't... I pressed A to present it, but I need to press X to present it. So I guess we'll just skip through that. There we go. Got it! As well as the initials, there is also an emblem on this fountain pen. An emblem that you will, of course, recognize, Mini memo san Um... Goodness me! It's... it's the emblem of the show you news! In other words, the owner of this pen is an employee of the Shoyu News, whose initials are RM. Suddenly the stars in the night sky don't seem so numerous, do they? Well, Mini Mimosan, how do you respond? Ugh, no! Order, order! Explain yourself, witness! So, 
That's not the right voice. So, this is how the mighty Supreme Court works, is it? Using coercive tactics to have well-meaning citizens reveal harmless secrets? I've used nothing but honest tactics. All right then. Fine, I won't try to hide it anymore. Yes, not long before that grim tragedy unfolded. I, a show you news reporter on behalf of the public, conducted an interview with the Englishwoman. An interview? You, you never mentioned this before. When exactly was this? As I said, it was before that evil little student girl showed her face in the hut. It couldn't have lasted more than two or three minutes, that's all. Or, it was just a brief exchange. But it came to nothing, and as we many memoists say, the people don't pay their dues for unworthy news. However insignificant you deem it to be, this court cannot overlook the meaning between yourself and the victim. You will testify now under oath about the precise nature of this meeting and what transpired. Got it. Yes, all right, but... On one condition. C condition In all good conscience, I couldn't speak out alone about this. You need to call back the earlier witnesses. So, Seki Natsume-san. Oh, the other witness. The earlier witness. So, so Seki-san. Oh, yes, according to my notes here. That man has a secret of his own. And brace yourselves. Because it's not a harmless one. It's big. What? What? Many memoism states that one man's secret is every other man's front page story. Very well. I, grant, I will grant the witness's request in this instance. Officer, summon the earlier witness back to the stand. So Seki-san hiding something? Ooh. We got another witness testimony here. Oh boy. And I think we're going to end this episode a little early here. 52 minutes. Because I'm getting tired. And on top of that, my voice is dying. And on top of that, I don't think we're going to be able to get through this cross-examination in due time. So, in the next episode, we will pick it up right here. And we will see what the witness's secrets are, potentially... So Seki Natsume's first, and then, of course, uh, that'll lead into this asshole's secret. Um, not sure how he poisoned her quite yet. I'm thinking it might be through the through the glass, but I'm I don't know. They never really tested the glass, so that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you guys very much for watching, and yeah. In the next one, we will continue on with this cross-examination and get ever closer to the end of this case. Don't know if we'll finish it in the next episode, but we'll probably finish it the episode afterwards. So, that's it for now. See you guys then.